If I asked you to give the current average gamer a mascot, an animal that perfectly describes the video game fan, what would you pick? You might say a raging bull for the anger and emotion that gamers can explode into when met with adversity. Oh, I should probably fucking quit this game. Look, I fucking put my head through my wall. Or you could say a walrus for the stereotype that gamers are fat, lazy losers. And honestly, if this was any other time in the past, I might have agreed with you. But with all the blunders of the past few years, I wouldn't pick any of those because I would argue that the current mascot of Team Gamer is actually a cold, wet, beaten dog. An animal that has so much potential to be seen as the happiest thing in the universe, now starved and abused, all ability of trust is completely stripped from this animal, to the point where even when starving, it would reject food if you were to try to feed it in fear they would be hurt again. The trust for quality content in games is so low that fans are now calling for remakes of old games rather than wanting a sequel, let alone a new IP. Because gaming fans just don't trust big AAA developers anymore. Such as this year's Summer's Games Fest, we saw a couple new original games, and a trailer that would have easily had a stadium roaring a few years ago is now met with complete skepticism. I've also never seen so many remakes announced in a single event, it made me even question if these companies still even make games anymore. Because if they're not trying to jump ship to make a shitty movie or TV series, what they seem to be making now is just software updates. If I could just forget what happened that night, even for a second. And because of this, gaming has seen a total content drought in the past years, and with the games that are actually coming out, it seems like these companies are all in a contest of whose game could get the lowest score on Metacritic. It seems gaming has no hope, that there's nothing that can fulfill our desires anymore, that the future of gaming is just now a grim, dark wasteland to never spark joy again. But that doesn't ring true with me. You see, over the exact same time of all of this, I've been having what I would say is the most fun I've had in games, or at least in a long time. In a time of corruption, exploitation, and war, I've been having a gaming renaissance. How? Well, it's all to do with a single tool, a tool I believe holds the solution to the current lack of games. And that tool is... So game modding by any means is not new. People have been modding their games ever since I looked like this, so obviously since 2015. Games like Minecraft, GTA, or anything from Bethesda are usually the games people think about when it comes to mods. And modding has seemingly been given the reputation of either, whoa, look at these zany things I could do with my games, or just outright cheats. Just something to enhance some of your favorite games. But this type of modding is not what I'm talking about. The mods I'm talking about are the ones that refurbishes or reinvents games to better fit your standards standard in modern times. Because the common thought about AAA games right now is that nothing seems worth our time anymore, and there might be some niche nuance holding you from trying out a game. But what if we can change that, to make the current games that are out right now that you find unappealing actually playable? Starting off small with graphics and quality of life. Older games suffer from dated graphics and old mechanics. Old graphics might scare you away from trying out a new game, and repetitive time wasters like this might taint your experience by prolonging you from enjoying join the main game. Time is money, and I'm broke, so with any chance to help me save a little time without losing the core of the game, I'm taking it. Such as the game Dying Light, with Dying Light Reshade taking the yucky tint out of the game, making the lighting far more realistic, and lockpicking removal, allowing you to open lock containers without the slow minigame killing all momentum. Or LA Noir, this game is a masterpiece, but the PC port is limited to 30 frames per second. And because of this, the game will feel a little dated, but slap on a couple mods to boost the game to a smoother 60 FPS and enhance the color, you pretty much slapped Definitive Edition on the title at no cost. Mirror's Edge Catalyst, I hated the camera going into third person when doing finishers and movement abilities are locked in a skill tree, but takedowns always in first person and no cost for upgrades fixes just that. Dead Island has a mod menu allowing you to select certain things you want to change such as increased sprint stamina and weapon durability, with many other quality of life changes. In doing some of these, you can change the game to a faster paced hack and slash game rather than than a more slower survival game than it was originally. Kingdom Come Deliverance. There's no real mod for this, I just want more people to play this game. But if I had to say a couple, it would be Unlimited Saving and Bow Dot Reticle if you're a coward. But of course, this is lightweight. These mods are just making the game prettier and in a sense easier. But I'm not really changing the game. But how about we change not only how we see the game, but how we see in the game. Seamless transition. 
So first person may not seem like much, but really changing a third person game to first person can really overhaul your experience with a game. Because with a simple camera switch, you've completely changed traversal and combat, making them both more in-depth and challenging. And also changing the perspective of your character like this, it allows you to see things that you're never able to see before in much more detail. Kind of like this. See? A little different, right? And along with these first person mods, if you want to sprinkle little changes to your playstyle, you can also practically change the genre of your game. Like Just Cause 2, if you reduce your grapple and parachute usage, you can turn your game into the most massive Far Cry game you've ever played. And even Just Cause 3, even though I think Just Cause 2 is a better game, Just Cause 3 has a more polished first person mod. And one of my favorite things to do was to take one of the fighter jets, which the interior wasn't able to be seen in the base game, and strafe run all the military bases around the map, using the mountainside to break line of sight of anti-aircraft missiles and the possibility of being shot down in the middle of the ocean and then having to make your way back to a friendly airbase to start again, this one mod changed Just Cause 3 into a military flight simulator close to something like Ace Combat. And also the first person wingsuit is something you've got to try. Or Watch Dogs 2, not really a good game but I'll get it for free at the Epic Games Store and this first person mod makes you feel much more grounded in the world and looking at people's bios and then looking Looking them straight in the eyes makes things feel much more personal, overall enhancing the whole point of this game. And The Witcher 3, this first person mod has got to be the most polished mod out there. Not only being able to see your full body, but things like inspecting your weapons, changing from first person to third person using a hotkey, changing the combat system to better suit first person, and all the settings options available to fit your style from little things like FOV to changing all of the cutscenes to first person. What the Yes, it can get a little janky, but seeing all of these cutscenes and never breaking out of your character's perspective just sends immersion to the moon, changing this game into a more mythical Kingdom Come Deliverance. Did I mention you should play that game? Play it, play it right now, play it, you won't regret it. Play it, play it. Speaking of perspective changes, if you took a little look at my channel, this wouldn't be a video of mine if I didn't talk about VR. Blade and Sorcery with the Outer Rim mod includes the biggest amount of Star Wars content I've ever seen. Every time type of lightsaber or blaster you can think of along with these big beautiful maps. With the original game mechanics, this mod has made the best VR Star Wars game that is out right now. But not only are people making different maps and weapon models completely functional in VR, but some are even making whole campaigns. The game Boneworks has a mod that recreates the first Metal Gear Solid and Goldeneye, bringing some of these old classics into the future. And they're not just recreating some old games, some guys have even created their own full in-depth original story that is going to have to get its own video in the future. There has also been a booming community of flat screen to VR modders, where they mod a normal flat screen game to be compatible with VR and sometimes with full controller support. And these mods have absolutely revolutionized games for me. Not only are these modders fixing and making games more fun, but some of these guys are even changing the platform you can play these games on. And some of these games I'm convinced were meant to be played in VR. Hell, two out of the past three videos of mine were about these VR mods and they won't be the last. So why am I making this video? Why did I just list all of these games and the mods I've installed? You see, games are expensive. And if they're not trying to siphon every dollar out of you, even still, 60 bucks a title adds up. So I regularly find myself in the Steam specials browsing the games that are out on sale. And a simple glance here shows that there's no real drought of games. There's actually a near endless amount of them. And in this list, I've seen some big AAA games I remember watching the trailer to when they were coming out, but I never tried them. Why? Well, it's just not the game I was looking for. We all have taste for what we want to play, and with this standard that we hold on to ourselves, we've let some games fade into obscurity. The art style, the genre, the setting, or just even hearing that the game is bad by a reviewer has most likely stopped you from buying a certain game. Take for example the game Days Gone. Days Gone was a game I was pretty excited for when watching the pre-release trailers. And after the game's release, the huge lampoon of criticism hit this game like a truck. Not only for the bugs on release, but but the story, setting, pacing, gameplay loop, 
cringy dialogue and the biker midwestern persona basically the entire game but all of this gave me an insight to what the game really was before i could ever buy it and not liking what i saw i gave it a pass but days gone has made a comeback to pc where it crawled back into my life and even half off i was still pretty skeptical on picking it up but this was in the middle of my modding revolution where i was modding everything in sight so just to see if there was a modding community for this game i searched it up on nexus before even buying it and browsing i saw a huge amount of mods changing things like character character models to full gameplay tweaks. And seeing all the possibilities I could make, I was actually getting pretty excited to play the game, kinda like how I felt watching the reveal trailer. And combining some mods like new clothes for Deacon, toggle HUD where it removes all of the HUD including the aim reticle, with gameplay changes like playing on one of the hardest difficulties and choosing not to use the bike at all. This might seem unappealing to some, you might think I turned Days Gone into a strand type game. But what it did was it removed the sense of safety while on the bike and completely dropped the biker aesthetic from the game. And not only that, one of the shaders I put in oddly enough changed the language of the game to Polish. You can change it back, but I actually kept it because I think it made the game more immerseful and you wouldn't want to hear what these characters have to say anyways. But what this all did was change the game from what was an open world action game about love and the greater good to a more dark and hopeless hardcore survivalist game akin to games like Stalkers or DayZ. The key word here is atmosphere and well, I mean, just see for yourself. Gościu, nie mam broni. Właśnie próbujemy iść na dach. Wyjdźcie z kopter, więc zabierz się. Odejdź mi broń! Odejdź mi broń! Ja sobie nie będę! Puść! 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 A ty co się gapi? Nie wiem, czekam, aż się kurwa ogarniecie. Dość! Słyszę strzał na zewnątrz? Tu nie jest bezpieczny. Kochanie, przecież sama dobrze wiesz. With just a couple downloads and a little file management, I turned Days Gone, a game seen as a joke to the masses and a game that I overlooked when it was being released, to one of my favorite gaming experiences. And this is the way I think we should all think about games, but really, it's actually already happening. Gamers, I believe, are already in a revolution right now. They just might not know it because it's not under a named movement. But it is still all done in practice, like if you compare what's going on right now in games with the story of the American Revolution, you get some eerie similarities. See, it all kind of clicks into place, doesn't it? I'm not trying to villainize the entire gaming industry, but if I have to be the one to fill in the gaps made by a billion dollar company and they respond by attacking the ones who make their games great, you can see why it's hard for me to pony up $60 for the next new game. And I'd rather wait and mod my old games until the cost of the new games lowers to a price I think it's worth. But of course, the benefits shouldn't be just for me. Because if we were to to save money by keeping ourselves entertained with mods, it is only fair we share some of those benefits to those who made this all possible. To the modders that spend their time cleaning up all of these companies' messes and try to better your gaming experiences, and at most of the time with no financial gain in mind. So if you are modding your games or you maybe got some inspiration to try out some of the mods that I've showcased, please, please, please 
consider donating and endorsing to these creators if you like their mods because god damn it they deserve it show them and to everyone that you don't have to bow down to the greater powers to make it in this industry because if these companies want to act all business we can too and we can start by taking our business to those more deserving and if a AAA game is worth $60, then show them that we see the effort put into their product by giving it a try. I am all about having fun, and I think if we all try to pursue it in any means possible and not let these companies treat us like a toilet that spits out money every time they take a dump, it might cause the gaming fans experience to change for the better. And then, maybe, just maybe, we might be able to finally change our team's mascot into something a bit less depressing. Subscribe, gamers.